Hey guys and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd YouTube channel for another interview. I'm Connor and joining me today is Max Casella to chat about his role in the new Honor Turkle film, that cold dead look in your eyes, as well as his past roles on The Sopranos and Doogie Howser MD. If you enjoyed this interview or the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, so welcome, uh, Max, and thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Absolutely, yeah. And we'll be mainly talking about your new film, um, that cold dead look in your eyes. But I guess before we get into the film directly, I was wondering if you could talk about your background and how you got started in acting and you know, why you chose to pursue that as a career. Uh, well, I, it goes back to when I was about 12 years old. And mm -hmm. um, obviously at that time, or maybe not obviously, but I was not thinking in terms of a career at, when I was 12. I was just having fun. Yeah. Um, I started out drawing and painting, and that was my thing. And then I discovered acting in a school play. And I just, something clicked. And then and that was all she wrote. I just never looked back. I just kept acting and acting. Uh, this, is, this is all in Boston and in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yeah. So I was going to school. I wasn't doing it. I was doing professional theater and some professional local TV stuff. And, uh, and then I, it wasn't until I graduated from high school and moved to New York City that I started pursuing a mm. career, getting an agent and studying acting and, and all that sort of thing. But uh, I've been acting now for over 40 years. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And you've got a great resume to, to, to prove that uh, for sure. And I suppose without giving too much away, like how would you describe the premise or the plot of this new film and yeah i mean just kind of set it up for anyone who might not have heard about it well uh it's a beautiful film it's beautifully acted beautifully shot music mm. is great it's it's my friend owner Tukel wrote it and directed it. i've done yeah. a number of movies with him and he's got a very unique take on life and the movie deals with a lot of things but it deals primarily with uh the central character dealing with um isolation alienation mm -hmm. in a in a technological world of high speed internet access and uh connectivity and um um 5g although it's never stated what it is but there's something in the air that's he's he's going through a mental breakdown and he starts to hallucinate all kinds of supernatural and very terrifying things where people are seemingly all around him becoming zombies mm. and it's never implicitly stated whether this is his psychosis or if it's a real thing because owner is too good of a filmmaker to spell it out that way yeah but you know take from that what you will but like it's never stated 5g it's called uh these theta boxes are popping mm. up all over the city mm -hmm. and it's for high speed internet access but it's implied that it's slowly driving everyone insane, or at least our central character is hallucinating horribly. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I was wondering if you could maybe describe the character you play and for anyone who's followed your career, like would, would you just say it's similar or different to what you've done before? Uh, it's, you know, I've done a million different roles. It's neither similar yeah. nor different. I mean, uh, it's just another role that I played. I play his boss, I, I'm running a French restaurant in Manhattan. Yeah. Most of the movies in French, so uh, all French speaking characters. Mm. This movie takes place a lot, a lot in a, in a French restaurant of which I'm the owner. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not uh, a French speaker in the film. Mm. Um, and I'm his boss and he start, he's my chef. And he's starting to spiral into psychosis and his uh, cooking suddenly becomes uh, disgusting and he's making mm. my customers sick. And uh, so I call him into my office and I'm saying, what's going on with you? And this is this, this food is disgusting. And so I say, you can't cook for me anymore. And he's begging me, please don't fire me. I need the money. So I said, all right, um, I'll tell you what, you can be, you can wait tables for me. Yeah. So he starts, yeah. starts to do that. And then he starts to mess that up terribly because he's flipping out. Mm. And then I end up canning him. Yeah. Would you say that you're the kind of actor where, like, if you're learning, you're, you're playing a restaurant owner, would you look into that kind of background of uh, what, what that would be like, even if it wasn't a big part of the story? Uh, that, that's what your character did. That makes sense. No, I take it case by case. In a movie like mm. this, didn't call for, like, I didn't have to, like, yeah. 
thought he, I mean, it just didn't call for it. I mean, it was clear what I'm doing. Yeah. And the scenes, the scenes that I had are clear what I'm doing in the scenes. I'm running a business. I've never, Max has never run a business, but I can, I can make a comparison to something else in my life. I'm running my own business, Max Casella business. Sure. Okay. Um, and if, you know, this guy's my employee and I have customers. It's just a matter of imagination and, and sympathizing with the situation. Um, I mean, look, you know, some actors go all out and, you know, mm -hmm. Robert De Niro drove a cat, a cab when he was doing taxi driver yeah. and all that's terrific and great. I, maybe it's because I haven't played, uh, roles big enough that I felt the need to do that. Mm. Um, I, I've done plenty of research for different jobs. Characters of mine have played. I played an A&R man in vinyl. Now, I didn't go and work in a record label to prepare, but I read a ton of books and I spoke mm. to a, an actual A&R guy. And um, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, what the guy's job is. Most of the case is interhuman relationships and yeah. act, what's happening in the scene right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just worked with Ben Affleck, who plays a, uh, a bartender in this film, The Tender Bar, and he's supposed to be the, the world's one of the best bartenders in the world. He's pouring drinks. He's like Tom Cruise in cocktail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The bar, he's the god of the bar and he's making a cocktail. And Ben Affleck shows up. He's like, I don't know how to make a cocktail. And the prop person just goes, OK, it's not just going to grab this bottle and that bottle. You're going to mix this and that. And mm -hmm. you're going to go over there, talk to this guy. And it's all choreography in the in movies. You only have to look like you know what you're doing for about 15 seconds at a time. Yeah. You know? So you don't have to go nuts. A lot of younger yeah. actors, they read about De Niro becoming a boxer for Raging Bull. And all that stuff's great. But, you know, sometimes it just goes to, you know, young actors, they they think they have to do a lot more than they necessarily have to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly some people I've spoken to, I've heard stories like even if it didn't call for it, at least I learned a new skill out of learning about, you know, even if I didn't need, need to actually use it on the project, I got and something out helps. of it anyway kind of thing. If that helps you, it helps you. Every actor is different. I mean, I played yeah. a boxer in a movie and I went to Gleason's gym in Brooklyn and I trained. So I didn't mm -hmm. know because I had to do a fight and I had to look like, a, but it was just a small fight. It wasn't like I wasn't playing, a, you know, you know, a Jake LaMotta or anything. I was right, playing a rock player, player. Yeah. Light, lightweight and I had one street fight to do and I had to look like I knew how to like throw a punch like I as if I used to be a professional boxer and right. I went to the gym and I learned that you know mm. again you know you only have to look like you know what you're doing for like 15 seconds at a time basically yeah do it just do what is what is called for and not more because you because mm. you also have to leave room for the the important stuff which is you know what's going on between you and me in the scene right now what do i want from you am i trying to affect you to get you to do something i want or to get to change you in some form to pursue my own objectives you know mm. yeah and i suppose like going back to to this film that cold dead look in your eyes like how would you say um it might kind of you know like compared to other films in a similar genre how, how, how do you think it might stand out I don't know what genre any owner to Kel film is. I mean, it's, it's right. the owner of his own genre. He's, mm. he's such a unique artist. He, he writes his stories of things that interest him and they mm. go in all different directions. And yet the movies are so good and they're so tight and they tell such good stories, but they are often unexpected. So I, I wouldn't know what genre to put any owner to Kel movie in other than okay. just say, watch his other movies. I've done three or four movies with him now. The first one I did was called Applesauce, mm. which is a crazy dark comedy. It's hysterical. You can get it on Amazon. Um, we did a film during the pandemic about, about uh, isolation. These two priests in a church called uh, Scenes from an Empty Church mm. with the great Kevin Cargan, the great Thomas J. Ryan and myself and uh, a lot of great actors, Craig Bierko. And, it, you know, and then some supernatural stuff all of a sudden happens out of the blue, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's really about human, you know, experiences. Mm. All these movies you can watch on, on Amazon Prime and, you, and people should go check them out because otherwise they fall through the cracks because there's yeah. so much content in the streaming space, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of um, flows nicely into my next question. I was going to ask where, where can people catch this film, the, 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 that colder look in your eyes? Uh, you know, it's when it gonna get a, I think a short 
theatrical release. And then I don't, I'm imagining it'll probably be on Amazon, but I could be wrong. Right. Um, but I'm sure it'll be on Amazon or so, something like that. Yeah. And I'm sure people keep an eye out either way for wh wherever it turns up. For yes. sure. Yeah. And I know obviously kind of, um, I guess like switching mediums a bit, we're kind of talking a bit about like your, your resume and, I think, uh, at least for me personally, if I like see your name, I think of The Sopranos and Doogie Howser, which obviously are well, both television, but both polar opposite apart from each other. But like, do you have a preference between doing television or film or is, is it all just work as an actor kind of? Uh, television and film seems to be ex the exact same thing as far as the experience of making TV and film. You're working mm. with a camera and it, it's shot the same way yeah uh, i love all forms of acting i love film acting i love theater acting yeah theater yeah yeah um i've done a lot of theater and uh i always want to do theater uh, not all the time because you can't really make a living at theater yeah but um i always love to do a show maybe once a year or every other year just to because it's so much it's so different than making films, you know, it's like, it's live. There's something you get from that being mm. on the stage. Uh, the, the camaraderie is, is a lot different. You know, you're like, it's like, you're all together going to war almost like we're all hunkered down to put on a show. Yeah. Um, and that's, I love, I love everything about doing a play. Mm. Yeah, I, I've kind of heard this. I don't know whether you would agree with it or not, that people tend to say whichever one they did first is the one they kind of lean more towards. If like, if you were a theatre actor who got into screen, you kind of, you're kind of more towards theatre, or if you did the other way, you're more towards screen, but theatre's kind of like something you like to do occasionally. Would you say that would generally be true, or could it be not different for, me for everyone? Personally. Right. Not, for, not for me personally. I mean, my, the first jobs I ever had was in the theatre and to a lesser extent, films. But mm -hmm. I, I always wanted to do films. First of all, you know, you can make a good living doing films. Yeah. And I love movie sets. I love acting with the camera. Uh, I love, you know, the greater exposure of it. If I was just a theater actor, I would miss out on, on so much. I just, uh, I would rather do films first and then supplement that with doing a play here and there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh, a smaller, smaller audience. Yeah. Know? And I, I suppose that even if someone did enjoy like one more than the other, you have to be practical about it. You know, like, as you say, you know, there's one that makes clearly a much better living than the other. As a, as I don't necessarily time. enjoy one over the other. Well, I enjoy yeah. them both. They're very, very different experiences. Mm. And I love them both. So yeah. I don't enjoy one over the other, but I want to do films primarily mm. or TV primarily because yeah. it's far greater uh, audience outreach and money is, is, is much better. And, uh, you know, I want as large an audience as possible. Mm. Yeah. And actually both of those um, past TV projects of yours I mentioned, uh, actually both this year have kind of a new extension onto them. Obviously, the, the Sopranos got a prequel film. Doogie Howser got a reimagining on Disney Plus. So, like, how's it kind of felt for you seeing these parts of your career kind of reimagined or reinterpreted in these different ways? I haven't seen either one of those. I haven't seen uh, Saints of Newark. I haven't seen the new Doogie, uh, whatever it's called. Yeah, Doogie uh, Kamohala. It's it's in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, I don't watch. I don't watch too many movies or television, to mm. be honest. If I watch movies, it's usually like. A criterion channel or something like that yeah um i don't watch a lot of tv i'm just not interested that much mm. even yeah. in stuff i know is good i just don't check in with it very often yeah i mean is it a case of like being an actor and because and obviously it's you know not being able to get into it because you know it's structured or you know yeah i mean it's hard to watch movies in american it's hard to watch american movies in american tv as an actor, because you can't really watch it like a member of the audience. Yeah. Now, inevitably, it's like, oh, I auditioned for that role and didn't get it. Or, oh, yeah. I really wanted to be on that show and didn't get it. And there's the guy that got it and fuck him. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or, yeah. uh, you know, I, I can just see, you know, 
how they shot this and I can just see how the actors are behaving and mm. it's just not that appealing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as you were kind of um, briefly mentioning there, like obviously acting is quite well known to be competitive and maybe not for the faint of heart to like try and get into or like, if you're easily upset by being rejected or something. But I suppose for anyone who's starting out or someone who's like struggling to book anything, like what advice would you give to those people? Only that um, you're going to get rejected. Rejection is the norm. You start mm. from rejection. Uh, you start from failure and you basically try to move the needle as little bit as far as you can towards success but mm. it's always going to reset back to rejection and some form of failure or another and the only thing that's going to sustain you if you're going to have a long career is that you got to love the process of acting you got to just love the job no matter what mm. And you can't just say it can't be conditional, like, well, I only want to be an actor if I can be this kind of have this kind of success. Yeah. You know, success is what you make of it. You know, not every actor is going to be a movie star, obviously. So uh, what then? You know, uh, you better you better fall in love with it. Otherwise, you should find something else to do because it's going to it's not necessarily going to love you back. Mm hmm. And that goes for everybody, even the biggest stars. They make a movie and it bombs, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, the audience rejects it, you know what mm. I mean? Or something, you know what I mean? Or you, there's all kinds of pitfalls in it. Never, yeah. And that ends no matter how high up the ladder you get, mm. basically. But you've got to love what you do. Otherwise, do something else. Yeah. Yeah. And something I've taken as well from asking that question to other actors and kind of what they've said is that it's not, uh, you know, um, not always necessarily a reflection on the person like you know like it, for example they they might just be too similar to someone they've already cast or they might not look like the family they're trying to put together it might not you right, know, right. have anything, anything to do with them you know the actor often doesn't know what decisions are being made that affect him behind mm -hmm. the scenes you have no idea you're in a, such a weak position you're you're not part of the conversation you just yeah. know you got the job or you didn't get the job mm -hmm. so uh rejection is a normal thing it's so normal for me it never bothers me unless I get really close to something or it's something like I really, really liked mm. or something like it was a really good job, like a big part in a TV series that could totally change my life financially. Yeah. Uh, and that sometimes they would sometimes you lose and it really hurts more mm. often than not. It doesn't. And you just it's just par for the course. Yeah. Reject is just part of it. You can't avoid it. Uh, absolutely yeah and uh, just you know to wrap this up with my uh, last question obviously we mentioned uh, the film for you that's coming up but I suppose that uh, what else you hope to accomplish in like, the coming months as we head into 2022 uh, I got I've, I've been working a lot this this past month I'm going to work some more I'm doing a mini series called Jigsaw next month okay and then um and then honestly I don't know uh, what the new year brings there's a possibility of doing something else in the spring um i don't know i you know i never know that's the problem being an actor is it's not a whole lot of job security and you, you can't really plan too far ahead in advance yeah that's just part of it mm. so uh yeah but i'm luckily i've been busy so i i've been enjoying my work immensely and i've been able to do it and i've been busy so it's all mm. good i don't i can't answer about what i'm going to be doing next year that's sure. sure yeah yeah yeah, well, I mean, I guess best of luck, you know, with the film, with your other ventures, whatever might crop up, you know, after this conversation. And I guess Thank all you. the best and take care and stay safe. Thank you. You as well. It's a pleasure to talk to you.